everyone, welcome back. I'm Michaela Kathleen, and I thought for my fourth video I should finally get around to doing a bookshelf tour. So, to start off with, I got my shelves from Menards. My dad was very excited to have an excuse to go to Menards, it's his favorite store. <laughs> and these um, you bought separately, but they go with the shelves and you can get all sorts of pretty colors. Um, and I'm going to be talking about 177 books today, but that's not all my books. A lot of my books are on my TBR shelves, and that is going to be the next video. So first we have my John Green shelf, and I do have them in order from favorite to least favorite. So first is The Fault in Our Stars, of course, An Abundance of Catherines, which I feel so bad for. I feel like it's a little underrated of all his books. It's so funny. I very rarely laugh out, out loud at a book, but I do so much at this one. Looking for Alaska, Paper Towns, and Turtles All the Way Down, which I was lucky enough to get a signed copy that has DFTBA in it. I was so excited. Next, we have This Star Won't Go Out, which I highly recommend. Um, Esther Earl was partially the inspiration for The Fault in Our Stars. Um, she sadly died at the age of 16 of cancer, and this book is just a compilation of her diaries and short stories and members of her family wrote about her, and there's a foreword from John Green, and I highly recommend going to buy this because proceeds go to the charity This Star Won't Go Out. I will leave a link down below if you would like to support a good cause. And last but not least, An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by John's brother Hank Green. And of course I have some of my favorite Beanie Babies from when I was a kid on this shelf as well. The next shelf is my Scott Westerfeld shelf, starting with the Uglies series, including Uglies, Pretties, and Specials. Um, this is the series that really got me into dystopian series, so it is still my favorite. And then we were lucky to get this bonus book of extras. And of course, even luckier, he is still continuing the series presently with the new spin-off series, Imposters and Shatter City. Then I've got a Scott Westerfeld standalone book called Afterworlds, um, which is not super well known, I feel like, which is sad because it's actually a really cool concept. Um, it's told in alternating chapters with uh, the main chapters being this teenage girl who is getting her first book published and is moving to New York, and then the alternating chapters are the book that she is publishing, so that's really cool. And finally we have the Zero series which he wrote with Margot Lanigan and Deborah Biancotti, I think is how it's pronounced. Um, this includes Swarm, or Zeros and Swarm, um, and this is also a really cool series about teenagers with superpowers that are not always so helpful. Okay guys, have I got a frustrating story for you. As you can see, I'm in a completely different outfit and different hair. That is because, so I've been shooting on a new iPhone with a very old MacBook and the struggle has been real. Um, I would not have been able to get any of the videos for any of the shelves. I've been shooting separate videos for each shelf onto my laptop if it weren't for my lovely, lovely boyfriend who helped me. But alas, as much as he tried, he could not get the shelf to transfer. And so I'm reshooting right now. But the lovely thing is, this is not the first reshoot. Ah, this, the first reshoot I framed terribly because I'm leaning my phone against a stack of books right now, as I have been for all of my videos. And sometimes I mess up the framing. So here we are, our second reshoot. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. My Rainbow Rowell slash other female authors YA books shelf part three. The cats have been great emotional support during this time. Okay, maybe not Mako. So first I've got this cute little book nerd pin, which I got from the subscription box Scribbler, which is a subscription box for writers, and it is super awesome and helpful. 
Then I have this Bell Pop from Once Upon a Time. Mm -hmm. And my first Rainbow Rowell book is Fangirl, which is my favorite Rainbow Rowell book. It is the first one that I read by her. Um, and I had asked for it for Christmas a few years ago, not knowing anything about it or her. And all I knew was the title Fangirl, which I thought was an interesting title. Um, and little did I know, I would basically be reading a book about myself. People say all the time that they feel like they're reading about themselves with certain characters and oh, they just felt such a deep connection and everything and I've never really felt that before. Um, I'd say the closest would maybe be Hermione from Harry Potter, but I'm very shy and she's very confident and other than the reading thing, we're very different people. But with Kath, I was like, oh, I get it now. I get what people mean when they say that because just from her shyness and the way she handles it and the way it manifests, it was really personality-wise like I was reading about myself. And then also it did not hurt that um, Kath and Rainbow are from Nebraska. And Kath goes to UNL, which is the school I attended for college. And she was an English major, I was a journalism major. And so it was just a really deep connection with this book. Um, and then there was a bunch of like really tiny weird coincidences like um, Kat's dad has a guy boss named Kelly and my dad has a guy boss named Kelly and there were like at least six different like weird tiny coincidences like that in this book and every time I would just be like oh gasp <laughs> so this was a really fun read and it is still my favorite rainbow book Next, I've got Eleanor and Park, which I got this special edition from the local Omaha bookstore, The Bookworm, which is a bookstore that Rainbow Rowell goes to a lot, and so they always have different special editions and signed copies of her books. And this one is just really beautiful on the inside. It's got this beautiful fan art on the inside front cover and the back cover, and it is signed by Rainbow and she has such a cute signature. I've also got Landline and Attachments, which is another book that makes me laugh out loud. Also on this shelf is Holding Up the Universe by Jennifer Niven, Miss You by Kate Eberlin, and the entire Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants series by Anne Brashars, including The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants, The Second Summer of the Sisterhood, Girls in Pants, and Forever in Blue. And actually, I think there is one more Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants book that was published, like, I think quite a long time after the original series that I did not find out about until, like, years later, and I would be very interested in getting that now. If I Stay by Gail Foreman, Love Letters to the Dead by Ava Delara, Love Blind by C. Desir and Jolene Perry, Dear Emma by Katie Heaney, and The Last Letter from Your Lover by Jojo Moyes. So this next shelf... Hopefully you can see it and me, it's very low down to the ground, um, is just more YA books. It's another YA shelf. Um, I've got my, my two Beanie Babies here, one for my birthday, a February Beanie Baby, and one with my name. Um, first, we have Kids of Appetite, which was my favorite book that I read two years ago, I would say and this beautiful gold edition of The Hate You Give. Um, this is one where I really, I think, liked the movie adaption even better. Um, I won't give away any spoilers, but they made a big change at the end, a very dramatic moment that, for me, just really uh, brought the story home. We've got The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky, I think. I Love You, Beth Cooper by Larry Doyle, another one where I liked the movie better, doesn't happen very often. And The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton. It's Kind of a Funny Story by Ned Vizzini. Um, I just recently got the movie for Christmas, which I watched it several years ago, and I just read the book this year, so I'm interested to watch the movie again and see how they compare. The Spectacular Now by Tim Tharp. The Fashion Committee by Susan Juby. Windfall by Jennifer E. Smith, City of Saints and Thieves by Natalie C. Anderson, We All Looked Up by Tommy Wallach, Violent Ends, which is an interesting book. It is uh, a story about a school shooting told from 17 different points of view, and so each point of view has a different author. 
Why We Broke Up by Daniel Handler, also known as Lemony Snicket. The Art is by Mara Coleman. A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness, with the art by Jim Kay, who also did the art for some editions of Harry Potter. And this was inspired by an idea from... I'm sorry, I never know how to, how to pronounce this name. Sybin? I, I know I'm totally wrong. Uh, Dowd. Um, she had she died of cancer, um, and she started writing this uh, during her treatments. Um, I believe she wrote it for her son, and Patrick Ness continued the story for her. The One Memory of Flora Banks by Emily Barr. Wonder by R.J. Palacio. And Me and Earl and the Dying Girl by Jesse Andrews. Next we have my dystopian shelf. I've got this arrowhead that I got when I was like eight years old from South Dakota. And I've got The Last Book in the Universe by Rodman Philbrick. This is the second book I ever read after Harry Potter. This kind of is one of the books that began my reading journey. Next I have the Hunger Games trilogy, including The Hunger Games, of course, by Suzanne Collins, Catching Fire, and Mockingjay. And I am very excited that next year we've got a spin-off book coming out for these. I also have the Divergent trilogy by Veronica Roth. I just have the original series Divergent, Insurgent, and Allegiant. Then I have the Matched trilogy by Ali Condi, including Matched, Crossed, and Reached. Um, I got this first one, Matched at NerdCon Stories at the Apparating Library, which was very exciting. I had never seen the Apparating Library before. Um, they go around to conventions, and the first night of the convention, you bring a book to leave at the library, and the next day you come back and pick out a different book. So this was super exciting. Um, I didn't love this series. The first book was super interesting. I very much enjoyed the world building, um, but the series kind of slagged off after that for me, but I think I will probably always keep it because I got it from the Apparating Library, so it's a bit of a keepsake for me. And finally, 1984 by George Orwell. All right, back to another floor shelf, um, and this shelf is fantasy books by female authors. First, I've got this gift card container that I have kept forever, and I have a bunch of movie stubs in it for no apparent reason. First on this shelf is Princess Academy, which was uh, one of the first books I read as a kid. Um, this has been a mainstay for much of my life by Shannon Hale. Next, we have The Goose Girl, also by Shannon Hale. The Prophecy of the Stones by Flavia Bujor. Um, this book was written by a 14-year-old girl from France. Ink Spell and Ink Death. I do have Ink Heart, but it is on my To Be Read shelf. I'm wanting to reread it soon, so that will actually be in the next video. Um, and these are by Cornelia Funk. And then I have the Land of Elyon series by Patrick Carmen, um, including The Dark Hills Divide, Beyond the Valley of Thorns, The Tenth City, Stargazer, and Into the Mist. And lastly, I have The Oracle of the Horses by Kathleen Miller. Um, this was a self-published book by a 13-year-old girl um, who her dad worked with my mom when we were kids, and so I got her self-published book, which she had taken to the local Barnes & Noble, and she asked the manager to read it, and the manager agreed to stock copies in the local bar Barnes & Noble, and she got to do a book signing, so that was really cool. All right, moving on to my tall bookshelf, and we will start, of course, with Harry Potter shelf. Um, I've got a Fred Pop here with his Weasley's trunk, Harry in his Quidditch robes, Sirius. I've got a Slytherin bookmark that my cousin got me from the Wizarding World of Harry Potter in Florida. I was so mad. She's been there so many times and she does not like Harry Potter. In fact, she dislikes Harry Potter, but she was nice enough to get this for me. One day I'll make it there and get myself some stuff. I've got a little Hufflepuff pin. I've got this 
wand that I made at my local theater. I used to do plays there. More pops, Harry and Hedwig. I've got this Hufflepuff necklace. I am a Hufflepuff myself. Have this beautiful leather bound edition of Harry Potter and the Chamber of the Secrets with gold leafed edges and this wonderful art at the back. I treasure this one very much. The first four books I have in the original um, paperback editions, American paperback editions, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, and Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. And the final three books I have in hardback, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, and Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. I also have this Harry Potter, A Journey Through the History of Magic that was published by the British Library. They had an exhibit a few years ago with um, the real world history of magic. I've got this cute Niffler Fluffy. I have a hardback edition of Tales of Beetle the Bard which is my favorite uh, Harry Potter accompaniment book. The tales are so fairy tale like and so cute. Um, my personal favorite is The Fountain of Fair Fortune. I have the original Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them and Quidditch Through the Ages. I have these random books, um, Conversations with J.K. Rowling and So You Think You Know Harry Potter, a quiz book. I also have The Seeker's Guide to Harry Potter by Geo Athena Trevarlin. And I have A Cursed Child, um, maybe rather unfortunately. I did not enjoy the play. I know that the fandom is very mixed reviews on this one. I, I fell in the camp of not liking it at all. I felt like the characters were not themselves. This was not my Harry. Whoever this was is a very mean person, and Harry is not. I've also got this giant Niffler. Nifflers are my favorite magical creature. And I almost forgot, I also have the illustrated edition of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, which is just a beautiful, beautiful book. Next, we have my J.K. Rowling slash mystery books shelf. I don't have a whole lot of mystery books because it is not my most favorite genre. I have this boomerang from Australia, this dragon beanie baby, and a Hulk. He is actually a Christmas tree ornament, but he is much too large for the Christmas tree, so I just leave him on the bookshelf year-round. I've got The Casual Vacancy by J.K. Rowling, the Cormoran Strike series, including A Cuckoo's Calling, The Silkworm, Career of Evil, and Lethal White. For other mystery books, I have Stephen King's The Green Mile and Dennis Lehane's Mystic River. I also have another cool extra from Scribbler, this little mystery print. Next is my Peter Pan shelf. I have this random little Peter Pan card. I don't remember where it's from. I have an old iPhone case with Peter Pan on it. I have this empty Tinkerbell tin and this Peter Pan tin, which has some more movie stubs in it. I like to collect movie stubs. I have this beautiful Barnes and Noble edition of Peter Pan and Peter Pan in Kensington Gardens. I have this spin-off book called Tiger Lily by Jody Lynn Anderson. This is a really good book for older fans of Peter Pan. I have the Peter and the Starcatcher series, including Peter and the Starcatchers by Dave Barry and Ridley Pearson, Peter and the Shadow Thief, Peter and the Secret of Rundoon, Peter and the Sword of Mercy, and finally, The Bridge to Neverland. I also have the Disney Fairy series by Gail Carson Levine, including Fairy Dust and the Quest for the Egg, Fairy Haven and the Quest for the Wand, and Fairies and the Quest for Neverland. These books are really beautiful, and if you love illustrations, I would highly suggest taking a look at these books. And I also have the accompaniment book for the Disney fairies, In the Realm of Never Fairies, The Secret World of Pixie Hollow, which is also filled with beautiful illustrations. Next, I have another fantasy shelf, Danny on the Throne, 
a little piece of movie reel because I used to work in a movie theater. Frodo from Lord of the Rings. Beautiful leather bound Barnes and Noble edition of Alice in Wonderland with the gold leaf edges. Another Barnes and Noble leather bound classics edition of the Grimm's Fairy Tales. I have the Game of Thrones series, including a Game of Thrones, a Feast for Crows, a Storm of Swords, and a Clash for Kings. And I do also have a Dance with Dragons, but I am currently reading it. I also have the complete Aragon series, but that is also on my TBR shelf because I am planning to reread it soon because this year I got The Fork, The Witch, and The Worm, so I wanted to do a reread before reading these. And these are all by Christopher Paolini, of course. My next shelf is kind of a miscellaneous shelf, but it's mostly kids' books. First, I have a, another little item from Scribbler, just a little post-it notes book. Got this Lion King iPhone case, some more friendly pets, an Oscar Mayer weenie whistle. I've got the original Warriors series here by Aaron Hunter, including Into the Wild, Fire and Ice, Forest of Secrets, Rising Storm, a Dangerous Path, and The Darkest Hour. I also have the New Prophecy series, including Midnight, Moonrise, Dawn, Starlight, Twilight, and Sunset. And for these, I only own the first two series, the original series and the New Prophecy, because after that I felt they got a little bit repetitive. And honestly, I hang on to these for just memory reasons. These were a very big part of my childhood. Um, one of the first books I wrote as a kid was very heavily inspired by these series. I also have the Lunar Chronicle series by Marissa Meyer, including Cinder, Scarlet, Cress, and Winter. And for this series, I don't have any of the spinoff books. I just have the original four. I'm not a huge fan of accompaniment books most of the time. I also have the first three of the Maximum Ride series by James Patterson, including Maximum Ride and Angel Experiment, Maximum Ride Schools Out Forever, and Maximum Ride Saving the World and Other Extreme Sports. I also have the Jurassic Park series, including Jurassic Park and the Lost World by Michael Crichton. I have I have the first book in the Tale of Emily Windsnap series by Liz Kessler, The Wish by Gail Carson Levine, and the first book in the City of Ember series by Jean Duprat. My next shelf are my adult books. I have this little mailbox my cousin got me for my birthday many years ago. Some little duckies that I bought the day that I found out I was going to be having a nephew. Orphan Train by Christina Baker Klein. The Boy in the Striped Pajamas by John Boyne. A Fireproof Home for the Bride by Amy Scheib, The Help by Catherine Stockett, A Man Called Uva by Frederick Bachman. I would really like to read more of his books. The Librarian of Auschwitz by Antonio Eterb. And then I have three books by Marcus Zusak. The Book Thief was the first book by him that I read, and I loved it so much. It is so interesting of a perspective to be narrated by death. I think it lends so much to the book. And also, if you could not tell from my other adult books, I am very interested in World War II. So then I went and I got I Am the Messenger, also by Marcus Zusak, and Bridge of Clay. I must say, The Book Thief is definitely still my favorite book by him. All right, we're back on the floor again, so hopefully this is framed good. <laughs> uh, this shelf is another miscellaneous shelf, and again, mostly kids' books. have this big beanie baby. Some more film strips, and a Captain America iPhone case. First, I have the whole Twilight series, including Twilight, New Moon, Eclipse, and Breaking Dawn. Hopefully I did those all in the right order. And these are by Stephanie Meyer. Um, and honestly, I've been considering unhauling these for a long time, but it's been so long since I've read them. I don't, I know I enjoyed them the first time I read them. I don't know if I still would. Um, I should probably reread them, reread them before unhauling. Next, I have the Charlie Bone series by Ginny Nimmo, including Midnight for Charlie Bone, Charlie Bone and the Time Twister, Charlie Bone and the Invisible Boy, Charlie Bone and the Castle of Mirrors, Charlie Bone and the Hidden King, Charlie Bone and the Beast, 
Charlie Bone and the Shadow, and finally Charlie Bone and the Red Knight. I also have Holes by Louis Sackar, Downsiders by Neil Schusterman, which he recently had a series come out, Scythe, um, the last one I believe just came out this year, that got super popular, had a whole bunch of buzz. Um, so if you like Scythe, I really would suggest this one. I feel like it's not as well known, maybe just because it's a little bit older, um, but it is a very cool concept as well. It is about uh, an entire community living underneath New York. And finally, The Giver by Lois Lowry. So this is my final shelf, really slumped down here in the corner. Um, this is another kind of miscellaneous shelf, but mostly nonfiction, and I'll start with those. I'm a cute little pig. Fangirl's Guide to the Galaxy by Sam Maggs. Right by Karen E. Peterson. Quiet by Susan Kane. This is an excellent book that I really enjoyed. I definitely recommend it for introverts. On Writing Well by William Zinser. Uh, this was assigned to me in journalism school, and this is definitely my go-to for all things writing. Marley and Me by John Grogan. Dear Me, A Letter to My 16-Year-Old Self. Uh, this is a book of letters that famous people wrote to their 16-year-old selves. It includes J.K. Rowling, um, Alan Rickman, and many others. Yes, Please by Amy Poehler. And Creativity, Inc. by Ed Catmull. And then over here on the left, I have kind of a random collection of journals, mostly. Um, these two I got in the Scribbler subscription box, and they were great. And then I also have Meet Cute by Me, which I put on Amazon, mostly so I could get a copy for myself. Big wish fulfillment there. Um, earlier when I was talking about the story that I wrote that was highly inspired by the Warrior series, my first book, um, I had cut out pieces of cardboard and made them into the shape of a book and printed out the word document and cut the pages down to size and like super glued them into the cardboard and painted the cover and wrote the title on. So yeah, just having like a physical copy of something that I've written was just personally for me. Some random InDesign books, a Spanish to English dictionary because I took Spanish in college, and finally the AP style book because I was a journalism major. So that was my bookshelf tour. I hope you all enjoyed. It was definitely a much longer process than I thought it would be. Um, and I hope you all will watch next week when I do my TBR tour. Thanks!